All this work that we're doing, brothers, for this ministry, eventually is going to pay off. You better believe it, man. It's going to pay off like you'll never believe. Okay? And by the way, we're the highest value male on this planet. The men of the Lord. The men of this truth. The hopeful elect of Yahweh Barshim Shai. The highest value male there is. <clears throat> all right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh. By Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Kakodash. Never honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples for his younger brothers. And peace and blessing and salutation and hopeful like out there pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah pushing and get up out of here. Shalom on to the hopeful like the believers and listeners who may have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. And what I want to get into all right tonight <clears throat> dealing with okay this organization that was started in 1973. All right, called the National black feminist organization okay which was a spinoff of the feminist movement you know started you know in the 60s you know with the two key figures all right with this bitter okay <laughs> handsome you know uh, uh ex-wife you know betty uh ferdinand all right betty frieden and you had the gloria steinman which was a cia agent okay with the cia operative all right to push an agenda and enchantment on the masses to cause dysfunction and disorder in families okay the way esau edom when he did this he was able to infiltrate families and he was pretty much was able to indoctrinate okay the every generation after that you know when he got the women to rebel all right mainly the women of the tribes mainly of the southern kingdom Okay, when he was able to indoctrinate them with rebellion, you know, he was able to, all right, manipulate the generations after with indoctrinations, all right, into what we see today, you know, because discipline and doctrine starts at the house, okay, a, a culture, your, your first culture starts from the house, okay, your first culture, you know, starts from, from family. You know, so I want to go here to Mark 4.22. It says, Mark 4.22 says, For there is nothing here which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. And we're steady, you know, uncovering, okay, the enchantments and the wickedness of Esau Edom. You know, and the spirit got, you know, this devil pretty much just putting movies and series out, all right, dealing with. You know, his enchantments, man, and his wickedness, man. All right, cloning Tyrone. He's blatantly, he's blatantly telling the masses, okay, that he's cloning, okay, the, 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 what they call archetype, all right? He got these certain archetypes, these prototypes, you know, the street nigga, the, the, the harlot, okay, uh, the pimp, you see, the pastor, and they all pretty much, you know, have an overseer of the pastor, okay, and it's the same system, you know, in every Jake community, you see, and he's letting you know that, look, he clones these different characters through his music, okay, <laughs> this is what Esau does, he uses his media, his propaganda, okay, his entertainment, okay, it's so-called science to clone, all right, people do what? Their mindset, okay? And now these things are coming abroad. Now, I want to go here, and this is from the series called Miss America. I don't know if you remember. Uh, I know you brothers and sisters probably remember that clip I was showing that woman, you know, which represented uh, Phyllis Shafley, you know, pretty much. Um, she was running a campaign against feminism, you know, and she was a representative for the housewives, you know, but it's a good series on um, Amazon Prime. You know, you got to pay per episode, you know, but if you're into, you know, history, if you're into, you know, um, you know, politics, dealing with certain, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, events, 
you know, as they go on, you know, if you're into those things, then it's a good watch, you know, um, very informative, you know, um, they stuck to the history, you know, because I used to watch the woman, uh, Felice Scaffley, you know, before I watched the series and, you know, they're on point, you know, as far as historical content, you know, so it's a good watch, you know, if you're into the history, um, dealing with particular things, but it's called Miss America. Now, I want to play this clip, all right, and we're going to go into this organization called the National Black Feminist Organization, which was a spinoff, okay, from, all right, the feminist movement, the Edomite Woman Feminist Movement, okay? You know, I don't have a problem with Margaret and her kind. But they're kind of tough with the gender before race. Wait a minute. Margaret's kind? If we include lesbians, we're not going to get support from the black power movement. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> you want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. There will be no lavender menace bullshit here. Lesbians are welcome. Horizontal hostility is not. Where's my milk? Oh, shit. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> Tell everybody what you say whenever the kids at school ask you why your mama is gay. I say why your mom straight. <laughs> Because we embrace everyone in this one. That's right. You, we can get along. So you see, all right, the indoctrination being planted. And you see the environment, you know, the children are being raised in. Okay? Raised by, you know, you, you have children being raised in environments. <laughs> okay, of what? A, a woman, you know, they like the other women. You see, this was in 73. Okay? So those those children, you know, uh, you know, they're adults now. Now you see they 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 have children that are almost adults now, okay. So now you see the seed that was planted that created this society that we exist in today, okay. So you had this woman saying, you know, we can get along with the white feminists, okay. But you look at it, the so-called white woman is still with her uh <laughs> with her husband. Okay, she's married. Okay, she's well off, middle class, upper middle class. Okay, who caught the bitter end of the stick? Okay, but you just like this whole Black Lives Matter movement, which at the head of that you have, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, lesbians. Okay, uh, a bunch of carpet munchers, man. You see. Except this time it's just way more satanic. Now you got the, the, the trans ams in the mix. Okay? But they planted this seed decades ago, man. Alright? And the little girl said when 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 people ask her at school why is her mother that way, she asked why is your mother straight? Okay? You see, this society has taught pure rebellion against righteous order. And anything outside of the union between the man and the woman is pure rebellion. Okay, it's straight up rebellion, man. Okay. Now when you go here, um All right, this is Proverbs 22 and 6. It says train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And see, Esau utilized this on the left hand side. You know, that's why he starts with the indoctrination as early as possible, man. Okay, and this society has taught us to be completely rebellious against the order of Yahweh Bashim al Shah. Anything outside of the order of man and woman, all right, and the man being the head, the woman being, you know, in servitude to the man, okay, is a rebellion. Okay? And Esau glorified their rebellion and made it some cute. Okay, which has caused great disorder. All right, and who suffered the worst, man? We did as a, as a people, man. Okay, now I want to go into all right 
their organization. Now, it said the National Black Feminist Organization, all right, or NBFO, was founded in 1973. The group worked to address the unique issues affecting black women in America. Okay, just as the serpent made Eve feel as what? She was a victim. Okay, she was being oppressed. She was being suppressed of what she could truly be. Okay, founder members included Florence, okay, Kennedy, which this she's in that movie well it uh series miss america all right and this is this woman Blue white all right she represents florence kennedy okay and then you have her. Uh, but they're kind of talk with the gender before race wait a minute margaret's kind if we include lesbians we're not going to get support from the black power movement you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. There will be no lavender menace bullshit here. Lesbians are welcome. Horizontal hostility is not. So here with the fro, you know, the heavy set. You know, to the left. All right, that's Mark. Okay, let's get her real quick. All right, so you go into the founding members. Okay, which is all these movements. You know, just like the the BLM, Black Lives Matter. Okay, what do you have at the head? Okay, now this is Margaret Sloan Hunter. Okay, was a black feminist. All right. Is being civil rights advocate and one of the early editors of Miss Magazine. Okay, and when you go into uh, Miss Magazine, that was a magazine of Gloria Steinman. Okay, so she was an editor on the Gloria Steinman, the CIA operative, you know, who's pretty much the face of feminism and who really, you know, pushed for abortion. Okay. And you see, and these women were at the forefront of pretty much incentivizing poor decision making by women. Okay, abortions. All right, uh, 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 you know, child care. Okay. Uh, um, uh, you had the uh, uh, child support. Okay, during this era, being heavily, you know, um, um, implemented. Okay. This incentivized bad decision making and promiscuity in women. Okay? And these are the women that was at the forefront, man. Alright? And what do you have today? Great confusion. <laughs> you see? These are the women that taught the masses how to think. And when you look at when you look at this series, you're gonna see the women that was pushing for alright, that feminist. They was bitter, unmarried, promiscuous, okay, uh, uh, lesbians, okay, party girls, okay, and now it has became a culture, and now uh, a housewife is, is, is being made fun of. You a housewife, then you know it's a problem, okay. <laughs> You see, and that indoctrination still lives on. Now I'm gonna get this video real quick and play this. All right, it's a quick video. We're just gonna go into the organization. The 1970s were pivotal for African American women. Through the creation of seminal political and literary organizations, they created the infrastructure for the modern black feminist movement. Black women have lived the twin realities of racism and sexism that exist at the intersection of their identities. To speak to these issues, political groups were formed like the National Black Feminist Organization, otherwise known as the NBFO. In 1973, it was born of the concern that neither mainstream feminism nor the civil rights movement had centrally focused on the challenges facing African-American women. 
Margaret Sloan was the leader of the National Black Feminist Organization. Future Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton was one of the founders of the organization. They, with a group of other women, set forth an agenda to lead to greater political media. My guest tonight is Margaret Sloan. And policy representation of black women's issues. But at the same time, the National Black Feminist Organization is, is, is being critiqued uh, by other African Americans saying that, wait a minute, what about working class women and the struggles that they're facing? But then we also have to deal with sexual identity and, and the oppression that queer black women will be facing. Out of this discourse, the Kambahi River Collective was formed. The Kambahi River Collective is saying that we have to acknowledge the various sexual identities within the African American community. And they are drawing their inspiration through name and deed from the Kambahi River Raid. And they named it after the Kambahi River because this was the place where Harriet Tubman helped free 700 African Americans during the Civil War. The Boston-based collective mounted political campaigns across Massachusetts, addressing police brutality, pushing to desegregate public schools, and fighting for justice for abused and slain black women. Though the Kambahi River Collective disbanded in the 1980s, their philosophy has endured, becoming part of the infrastructure of intersectional black feminism today. This notion of intersectionality was later coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, but exercised amongst the Kambahi River Collective in the 1970s. Decades later, black feminists are still fighting, drawing upon the tenets of the Kambahi River Collective, campaigns from the Women's March to the Contemporary Movement for Black Lives have flowered and thrived. So you see, okay, <laughs> off the backs of civil rights they was throwing all right the alphabet community in there as today okay whenever jake is marching and protesting now they done threw the trans am in there man you see it's getting worse and worse <laughs> all right that's why our scripture refer to our people is, is going in what direction man okay this is isaiah chapter one all right, verse four, it says, ah, well, I started at three. It says, the ox know his owner and the ass is master crib, but Israel doth not know my people doth not consider because our people march, cry, and protest, but they never think to return back to a righteous standard. They complain about their treatment, okay, and they always want to be the victim, but no one wants to return to a righteous standard, okay? They won't even acknowledge, you know, who they are. They won't acknowledge who their power is, man. Okay, they're all over the place, man. All right, verse four. Ah, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord, Yahweh by Shemal Shai. Everything that they're fighting and, and, and marching for is to be rebellious. Okay? You know, the nigga woman at the front line of, of, of abortions. Okay? A pro-abortion. At the front line of, of, of the alphabet community. The front line of feminism. The front line of all these rebellions in the earth. Eve has been there, man. Okay? And it says, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They are gone away backwards. Okay, and there, and ever since the '60s, you know, sparking from the feminist movement. All right, integration. Okay, Jake has what we we've gone backwards, man. <laughs> you see, now the things that 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 that, 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 that was, you know, unheard of, you know, in the '40s, '50s, now they're the norm. Okay, this man has been doing heavy enchantments, all right, since the 60s, man, you know, <laughs> you see, and I say our people have gone away backward, okay, 
And you go from there. I want to play this. All right. Because our people are heavy into idolatry. Don't even know it. Like our people, you know, you know, self-worship, you know, the worship of, you know, because all these go back to idol rituals. And you know, when you worship, you know, sex. Okay. That's why you have that ump, you know, your feminine sign, pretty much the Egyptian ump. Which is the worship of the vagina. Okay. The overlicks. The worship of the penis. Okay. This is nothing but idolatry. Culture man. And this is what it always leads to. And let's get it. I'm going to play this first. And this is another case. You call an equal marriage. So let me ask you. You call. Now. You have these. Alright. These are uh, pretty much. You know. Friends of Gloria Steinman. And they have what you call an equal marriage. Okay. Now let's listen to the logic <laughs> of this. Okay. You call an equal marriage. So let me ask you this. Who wears the pants in your family? Well, we both do. Uh, Brenda looks much better in them than I do. <laughs> but um, our marriage was, was really forged in the crucible of feminism. So we don't have assigned roles. And Fred, how about you? You call... Equal marriage. So, so he said they don't have assigned roles. Okay, it's a complete rebellion and confusion. Let's see you play it again. Really forged in the crucible of feminism, so we don't have assigned roles. And Fred, how about you? You call. All right, he said they don't have assigned roles. All right, and that's why Apostle Paul. See, this is the way of the heathen. Okay. This disorder, this is all the way of the heathen, man. Okay, we come from a standard, we come from scripture. Alright. What the scriptures say, um, first Corinthians 14 and um Alright. Alright, this is uh First Corinthians 14 and 40. It said, Let all things be done decently and in order. Okay, and when you rebel from the prescribed order of the scriptures, all right, when you turn away from the prescribed order of the scriptures, you're in rebellion. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33 said, For the Most High is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Okay, let your women learn in silence in the churches, for it is not permitted to them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. Okay, and the feminist movement was a direct rebellion between the order that the Lord has set up from the beginning. Okay, and that's why the Apostle Paul had to establish that hierarchy, okay, with the Church of Corinth. Because at the end of the day, when someone thinks that they're under someone else, you know, they look at you know, Esau painting the picture as if it was slavery. And I always had to make the point. So you mean to tell me, okay, that working at a car plant, okay, or working, you know, nursing, slaving, 11, 12, 13 hours a day, okay? You got some women drive Fort Lewis all, you know, all these different jobs, okay, that the woman has to work now. Women have to work two jobs, okay? So you mean to tell me that's not slavery, but folding clothes, okay? Opening the beer, <laughs> you know? Washing the clothes that, 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 that you know? Because both everybody's clothes got to be washed in the house, okay? So washing clothes, making the meal that you both going to eat, that's slavery, all right? But the, but the, the, the modern workforce ain't slavery, you know? Feminist was one of the biggest shams <laughs> ever committed in the earth, man. All right. So the Apostle Paul is, is establishing, you know, order. Second is uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3 said, But I will have you to know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Hamasiach is the Most High. Every man praying or prophesying. Oh, well, that was the point. Okay. Because. You got to make the point that everybody has someone over them. Everybody is under somebody except the Most High. That's why one of his titles is the Most High. 
there's nothing above him. Okay? But everything un uh, uh, everything under Yahweh Shai, I mean everything under the Heavenly Father, alright, has an order. Yahweh Shai has an order under the Heavenly Father. Israelite men have an order under Yahweh Shai. Okay? Even other Israelite men, you know, have a, you know have order above other Israelite men. <laughs> you see? And the Israelite woman is under that. Okay? Everybody is, is, is in subjection, man, to authority. Okay? That's order. All right? And we see the results of it is disorder. That's why when you go here, here's Wisdom Solomon 14, you know? We can end it here. Just want to make the points. All right. It's the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. All right, verse 22. It says, Moreover, this was not enough for them that they erred in the knowledge of the Most High. Okay? And you see, you know, over the decades, all right, the standard and the knowledge, okay, of a righteous way has diminished drastically. Okay? And people are pretty much doing their own thing. Nothing is off limit. He <laughs> says, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices or used secret ceremonies or made revelings of strange rites, they kept neither their lives nor marriage any longer undefiled. Okay. Pr promiscuity just went rampant. You know, there's, there's no, no, no one is marrying virgins anymore. That's, 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 a, that's, 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 that's lost. That's, that's over with, especially in the West. Cause that's what it means when the marriage is undefiled. Okay. That, that doesn't exist. But either one slew another traitorously or grieved him by adultery. So there reign in all men without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury. Okay? And this is the results, okay, of idolatry. The culture that comes with idolatry, man. You know, and these are all the things, all right, that are the norms in today. The slaughter of children, you know, those things that became the norm. You know, even... You know, beyond, you know, the abortions, you know, the children being left in car, the, the woman just, you know, just slaughtering, the, you know, she just slaughtered the children. Okay. <laughs> you know, it says so that they're reigning all men without exception, blood, manslaughter, death and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, <clears throat> perjury, disquieting of good men. Okay. Cause, 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 men that have honor and integrity, you know, like, nah, this ain't, <laughs> this ain't a society for us, man. You know, that's why it should, it's going to be, you know, it should be extremely easy for us, you know, to, to, to not want to be uh, uh, linked to this society, man. You know, to be able to walk away when the time need. You know, because this ain't a society for us, man. That like Yahweh Shai said, the prince of this world cometh. And have nothing in me like nah ain't nothing this ain't for us man you know you honest integrity like nah this ain't for us man this is this this society is set up for those type of men to lose okay only degenerates win in this society man okay <laughs> and it says disquieting of good men forgiveness of good turns defiling of souls changing of kind Disorder in marriages, adultery, and shameless uncleanliness for the worshiping of idols, not to be named in the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil. The worshiping of idols is the cause of all evils, man. Okay? And our people don't give their energy, you know, they don't uh, bow down to actual statues or burning incense to actual statues, man. Okay, but the philosophies that come from these pagan, 
customs, man. These satanic customs and doctrines, okay, that dominate the earth, man. The cultures that come with them, my people, all right, are heavily invested into these cultures, man. These pagan idolatrous cultures, man. Okay, and they all came from up top, Esau, Edom. Okay, the elites. Okay? So that's the point, you know, I just want to bring that out. You know, thought that would be pretty informative. You know, Lord will, you brothers. All right, and you few sisters are edified to the next time I say Shalom.